heart racing, airway constricting, breath coming thick and fast, hands shaking, knees about to buckle. Thousands of questions race through my mind. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why have I put myself in this position? I took a deep breath, I smiled, I acted, and I stepped through the door. Where was I? It was nowhere threatening. I was stepping into my university campus on my first day in 2007. I was absolutely petrified. And it took me back to that moment when I was seven or eight years old, when my mum was five minutes late picking me up from school. I remember standing at the doors, waiting, and after about 30 seconds, bursting into tears, crying inconsolably. She's dead, she's had a car accident, it's all my fault. Admittedly, being a little bit dramatic. Four and a half minutes later, my mother arrives, looks at me, glares, says, why are you crying? Get in the car. What I didn't realize then is that I was putting pressure on myself. And over time, I learned to hide that pressure. I threw myself into a world of literature, Shakespeare, Jane Austen, Andy McNabb. And all of their characters taught me the parts to play. Elizabeth Bennett in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice taught me to be an independent, carefree, confident woman. Andy McNabb's Nick Stone taught me that everybody gets scared, even the best operatives, even if you've been doing this for years. And Shakespeare taught me all the world's a stage and all the men and women, women in it are merely players. But what this really made me do was put on a facade for many years. It taught me to hide the truth. I've learned steps and processes over time and overcome so much. But then the whole world was thrown into this horrific world reimagined. It was a time when all of our plans, all of our possibilities, every moment that we had before us seemed to be snatched away. We no longer had access to the systems and behaviors that we'd learned before. Nuffield Health says that 80% of adults in the UK have seen a decline in their mental health, whether that's because of sleep, their work-life balance, or their fears of COVID. But for me, my world reimagined was very different. In this moment in history, I was able to look at my priorities differently. I no longer had to focus upon my career or my engagement with society. I had to think about me, my family, and my community and staying safe. It made me pause. It made me reflect. And in that moment, I realized I'd never truly internalized everything I'd learned. I needed to start living in the moment. I needed me to accept me. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but it really is true. And it's taught me three lessons. The first of them came from Ant Middleton, an ex-Special Forces operative who's written a book called um, First Man In, Leading from the Front. He says, make friends with your demons. Having dark forces within us is part of being human. Each one of us has a choice. Make these demons work for us or turn them loose against us. I remember reading that first a few years ago and thinking, but I don't have any demons. I haven't really had that hard a life. Then lockdown happened. I was alone. And I realized I really do. That demon was the voice in my head. My biggest fear when I was younger was always what other people thought of me. And I'd never realized that I hadn't really overcome that. But if I listened to myself, and as Aunt Middleton suggested, was 100% honest with myself, acknowledged my flaws, reflected upon them, I would be able to overcome that because nobody else is able to judge me but me. It reminded me that we have to sometimes speak up and ask for help. It's not a weakness, 
But actually, if we're truthful and we're honest, we can take control, not force ourselves to be in control. During lockdown, Delta Goodrum, one of my favorite singers, released a song called Paralyzed. She sang, it's just the way life goes. With a little time, with a little hope, with a little light you'll never know. For a little space, for a lot of love, close your eyes and think of better times, big dreams. Open your mind to find a little strength inside. Stop and rewind. Her story is extreme. She had an operation on her salivary gland. There was a complication and she lost all ability to move her tongue. Her nerves were paralyzed. She can no longer speak. She can no longer do her job. But she found a way to cope. And in those lyrics, I remembered the key thing that I've always stood by, positivity. For those of you that know me, you know I talk about this a lot. Ultimately, the more positive we are, the more we can progress. Ant Middleton talks about these ideas as being our fear bubbles, the things that we're worried about or unsure of. We have to step into the bubble before we can pop it. And once we pop one, we can pop another and another and just keep going. Anxiety had always held me back, worrying about what might happen if, should I do this? How will this change things? But once I pop that one bubble, once I say yes to doing something outside my, cons um, outside my comfort zone, ultimately, I'm going to learn. Failure can only help me. And finally, the last thing that I learned was to be kinder to myself. We've all gone through lockdown in different ways, but we all had to learn how to look after ourselves and be kind to ourselves. We live our lives at 100 miles an hour these days, but forcing ourselves to do more, or sometimes less, can help us step into our own reimagined worlds. Stepping back and reflecting upon everything that we do can help us see the bigger picture. Now, I'm not perfect, I am human, and this isn't 100% foolproof. But if I remember to be myself, to be positive, be kind to myself, then it just makes everything that little step easier. Thank you. <laughs>